Mexico City, the 33rd anniversary of the Revolution of 1910 is celebrated with a stirring demonstration of national unity. President Manuel Avila Camacho reviewing the procession from the palace balcony. Colorful pageantry depicting the birth of new social rights for the working people of this great Central American nation. Highlight of the day, a mass gymnastic drill by 50,000 athletes. The youth of old Mexico expressing their allegiance to the United Nations in spectacular style. Australia stage a Wild West show for servicemen on furlough. 60,000, the greatest crowd ever assembled in Brisbane, see Yanks and Anzacs compete in a thrilling steer riding contest. American soldiers from the far west, this reminds them of home. <laughs> Troop transport gliders line the field of an American Army Air Force base as airborne infantrymen prepare to go along. Gliders like these have seen service in Africa and in Sicily. Modern invasion tactics call for split-second timing, and no sooner does one craft leave the ground before another is speeding on its way. Giant C-47 transports, towing troop gliders, demonstrate how a single plane can hurl three times as many fighting men against the enemy. Over the objective, the tow line is dropped. As the transport flies on, the gliders circle for a landing. Even water is no hazard. Landings like this may sometimes be necessary, and the men are ready for any emergency. The American Air Force commander, General Arnold, watches the maneuvers with a practiced eye. For today, men of the airborne commands are playing an increasingly important role in modern war. Women auxiliaries of the United States Coast Guard celebrate their first birthday in uniform. Mrs. Roosevelt, flanked by heads of all the women's service organizations, takes the salute as the Washington unit parades past the White House. A year ago, these girls were in civilian life. Now they release more men for service at the front.
famous tennis stars, three Australians and an American, meet in Sydney. Quist, Bromwich, Crawford, and Kovacs, putting on an exhibition match for the Soldiers' War Fund. for sports, the servicemen see Quist and Bromwich, still the world's champion doubles team. From the office of Admiral Chester Nimitz, Commander-in-Chief of the United States Pacific Fleet, go orders for new attacks upon the Japs. New Guinea, Rabaul, the Marshall and Gilbert Islands, growing American sea power blasting the enemy in the Central Pacific. Jungle headquarters post in the Solomon Islands, Admiral William Halsey, Naval Chief in the Southwest Pacific, and Rear Admiral Wilkinson coordinate their sea and air forces in a drive against the remaining Japanese bases in this area. Reinforcements pour ashore at Bougainville. Amphibious forces rolling in through the surf of Empress Augusta Bay. Fighters in mottled green, Australians and Americans, push steadily onward as United Nations forces continue the offensive in the Pacific. <laughs> <laughs> 